Welcome back to part two of my NES clone series, where I take a look at games that emulate the gameplay or design of a more famous title, and in this case, I'm discussing The Legend of Zelda and its associated clone titles. Last time we discussed some games with a lot of similarities to Legend of Zelda's look and feel, but there's many more to cover that are even closer in comparison, so let's jump back in. Alright, let's get into some good stuff now with Star Tropics. Immediately, the Zelda comparisons show on the name select screen. Damn, that's pretty close. Star Tropics is basically a series of Zelda dungeons with little town mazes in between where you need to talk to someone or find something in order to move on to the next dungeon. You control your character very similar to Link, except you can jump, and the movement is a lot less free, tightly following the unseen grid pattern on the screen. Like Legend of Zelda, you solve most of the puzzles here by either killing all the enemies in a room or jumping onto a particular block, which then opens a specific door or chest. The combat is real time, albeit with a yo-yo instead of a sword. There's extra temporary weapons that give you more of a projectile. And at the end of each dungeon, there's a boss you have to defeat using some dodge and attack strategies. However, Star Tropics lacks Zelda's open world, its mini screen, and the item acquisition system. It's really much more of a combat and platforming game with minor puzzle elements than it is an exploration type experience. That being said, even if it won't scratch your Zelda itch, Star Tropics is a really good game in its own way, and a really solid challenge for anyone who's played most of the best and is ready to try the rest. Here's something I never noticed though. In the first town, if you talk to the pig, it turns around and shows you its butthole. Seriously, look at that little pixel they snuck in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 5 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. Star Tropics got a sequel, Zelda's Revenge, all the way in 1994, making it one of the last official titles released for the NES. It is pretty much the same game, with a few new tweaks. The graphics are a bit improved, instead of navigating islands, you're traveling through time, and most notably, the controls have been altered. Instead of the rigid grid movement style of the original, Zelda's Revenge employs control that more clearly mimics Legend of Zelda's. You can even move it at diagonal. Look out! I love everything about this change, except for the jumping. In Star Tropics, you always knew that if you jumped in the direction of a platform one tile away, you'd land on it. Here, there's a little extra momentum to your jumps, and even though it won't help you jump more than one tile away at a time, it will cause you to accidentally miss your easy leap and land in the water. Fuck that. If they'd only combine the freer walking around with the rigid jumps of the original, that'd be perfect. Otherwise, yeah, you talk to people, go to dungeons, fight the boss, rinse and repeat. Like its predecessor, Zoda's Revenge is pretty fun, even if it's missing the core elements to make it a real Zelda-esque game. It is, in my opinion, way harder than Star Tropics, so maybe play that one through first and see if it's up your alley before moving on to the big gun. Oh, and guess what? More buttholes! <laughs> yes! God bless these developers and their obsession with anatomical pixel representation. Yet another 5 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. Here's an interesting one, Guardian Legend. If you spend any time looking up hidden gems for the NES, you've probably seen this game mentioned before. Guardian Legend is one of the most unique titles on the system, combining adventure gaming and RPG elements with straight up vertical shoot 'em up. I can't really think of any title like this, and not just for the Nintendo Entertainment System. The adventure sections are top down exploring with scrolling transitions between screens, simple attacking combat with varied weapons, and lots of discoverable upgrades and items. The layout is very much open world, with a large initial map leading to other connected areas. The shoot 'em up stages are obviously not a Zelda thing, but they're essentially the dungeons of the game, eventually leading to a rad boss fight. The weapons are pretty cool, and you can use them in either section of the game, but they're not really necessary to reach new areas, they just kinda let you fire different styles of projectiles. There are some puzzle solving elements related to finding notes that then give you a clue on how to open each corridor, but there's none of the blow up a wall or push a block puzzle solving here. Overall, Guardian Legend is a great game, especially once you figure out where the fuck you're going. While very different from Legend of Zelda in many, many ways, it does kind of tick all the boxes of gameplay that potentially label it a Zelda clone. 
It's not, but if you're looking for a weirdo Zelda in space, this is the game for you. Even though it's awfully different, Guardian Legend has so many of the qualities we're looking for that I'd give it a 7 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. Moving on to much stranger territory, here's Spiritual Warfare. This is an unlicensed Bible game from Wisdom Tree who also made Bible Adventures and Exodus. I would have never guessed from this goofy cover that this was going to be a complete knockoff of Zelda, but yeah, it most definitely is. You wander around blasting ruffians with pieces of fruit? I think they represent the fruit of God's wisdom. What's amazing is that when you kill someone, they seem to convert and pray their way to heaven. Nice touch! You've got the standard Zelda hearts for life, the A or B item select, and the inventory screen with the map and everything. You even have bombs that are, no shit, vials of God's wrath. Fuck, that's awesome. There's also items that open up new sections of the game, these doves that act as currency, and lots of upgrades. There's even a few extras here that Zelda doesn't have, like a prayer spell that heals you, and these angels that give you money in exchange for answering Bible questions. Yes! Time to put my religion degree to good use. This should be terrible. Just awful. But I'm surprised to say, it's actually pretty fun. A little clunky, but fun overall. I just might do a whole review of this soon, so stay tuned. I think it's a 7 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. Magic of Scheherazade is a game you hear in the deep dive discussions of the NES, often mentioned as a overlooked hidden gem. It's set in a Arabian themed world and there's lots of allusions to Islam and Middle Eastern mythology. This is very much in the Zelda vein in appearance and structure, with overworld exploration leading to dungeons and bosses, which then lead to even more areas. It's not quite open world in the same way Legend of Zelda is, more like a series of huge maps separated by chapters. You've got a ton of items and weapons, lots of discoverable secrets, and real-time combat. But Magic of Scheherazade has much, much more than that added in. There's magic spells that can be used on the map and in combat, multiple party members that you can recruit as the story progresses, a ton of towns with people to talk to, and things like shops and even universities to visit, three different classes to choose from that you can switch between throughout the game, a leveling system that increases your HP, MP, and teaches new spells, and way more. Oh yeah, and there's time travel, with alternate versions of each area, kind of like a simplified version of Link to the Past. Honestly, I'm impressed. It's like they took the Zelda formula and just kept saying, what else can we add? It's almost too many options. There's a few downsides though, like occasionally you'll find yourself in a turn-based fight a la Final Fantasy. What's the point of this? These fights take forever, yield little, and are super easy to escape from. It even gives you three chances to run away before the battle even starts. Also, this game has jumping. I've never really used it, but I assume by giving you the ability to jump, the developers could then add in traps for you to jump over. As a result, fuck this water. Almost every death I experienced was from me accidentally walking into the water. Most of the time, I didn't even know that was possible. Boo! Plus, when you die, you start all the way back at the beginning of the game, even when you're in a dungeon. Overall, yeah, this game is pretty great. Not quite as polished as Zelda, but there's so many little bits added in here that it makes for a surprisingly deep playthrough. This gets a 7 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. Willow is one of the better movie adaptations on the NES, and that's probably because it was developed by Capcom for some reason. This is very much an adventure RPG hybrid in the Chrysalis or the previously mentioned Scheherazade vein, where you've got top-down action and exploration, but with experience points, magic, and whatnot. Like those games, you spend time in villages talking to people and then venture out into the wilderness before finding a dungeon and eventually its boss. The game is really fun, and while it's barring heavily from Zelda, it adds a lot of character and nuance to make it a unique experience. I will say though, this shit's hard. Mostly I'm just impatient and want to head straight to the next objective right away, but this will for sure get you clapped quick unless you spend 20 minutes or so killing easy enemies and then heading back to the village to heal. Also, Willow and other games like it really make you appreciate the battery save system. So many of these long ass games rely on the obnoxiously tedious password system. Not as big a deal if you're emulating, but on the original hardware, yeah, this blows. 
7 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. And damn, I can't believe it took this long to get to Chrysalis. Literally the first game that came to mind when I thought about Zelda clones. And absolutely, I'd say if you're looking for a game on the NES that's as close to Zelda as the real thing, Chrysalis is it. Like most of the other tiles on this list, it isn't quite the open world experience of the game it's imitating, but this is still a massive game, alternating between huge open areas and sprawling dungeons. The most noteworthy thing about Chrysalis, other than its excellent graphics, is the way the sword works. You start with the Wind Sword, and once you find the Ball of Wind, you can knock down certain walls and progress to new areas. Later, there's other swords and balls that let you cross rivers and melt ice and whatnot, so even from the start, it's clear that there are areas you can't reach yet and some secrets you'll need to backtrack to. Not only that, but certain enemies are weak to certain elements, but not others, so you'll have to alternate weapons. Honestly, this is going to be the shortest description of them all. If you haven't played Chrysalis, it's one of the absolute best NES games ever made, on par with the legend itself in many ways. Another 7 out of 8 on the Zelda scale. So there you go. This video turned out to be way longer than I expected because the more I thought about it, the longer the list became. Here's what I'd say to sum it up. None of these games are as good as the original Legend of Zelda. Not even close. As primitive as it appears by today's standards, Nintendo really nailed the design here. Once you get the lay of the land, it's almost addictive finding and beating the next dungeon just to see what new item you get and what new upgrades or secrets it can lead to. The other titles have some success replicating this, especially Magic of Scheherazade and Chrysalis, just with less finesse. Also, with the exception of the Star Tropics games, all these titles require you to spend hours grinding just beating the same enemies over and over and over in order to get enough money or experience points just to compete with the harder enemies in the next area. Zelda is a bit more clever than this, forcing you to complete dungeons in areas where the enemies are weaker in order to later face the more difficult ones. Of all the games I mentioned, Chrysalis and Magic of Scheherazade are the closest to the Zelda formula and also the most fun. And if you've played those and want to try some more downgraded versions, then Willow and Robin Hood are suitable replacements. The Star Tropics games, Guardian Legend, and Orchestra's Ring share certain elements with Legend of Zelda, but they're all very different in terms of gameplay. All still worth checking out though. Faria and Spiritual Warfare are kind of interesting if clunky experiences, and Deadly Towers, Fester's Quest, and Hydlide are supremely frustrating and grating. You're really scraping the bottom of the barrel there. I've got more of these planned for all the big Nintendo titles, but if they take as long as this did, it'll probably be a while. Anyway, thanks for watching, until next time.